days to the National Assembly resuming from recess. We're going to be dissecting some possible potholes and perhaps point the National Assembly to areas they should have a second look at when it comes to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, that all-important document. And we're joined by Mr. Samson Itodo, who's Executive Director of Yaga Africa. Well, Mr. Itodo, it's good to have you on the program and Happy New Year to you. Evening and Happy New Year. Well, let's talk about this Electoral Act Amendment Bill, sort of set an agenda uh, for the Ninth Assembly. Yes, no one is infallible really, but for a chamber that has over 400 representatives with aides and experts to consult, first, how did we make these mistakes? Well, uh, uh, it's a question that citizens are asking. Um, how come um, the bill that was replete with um, these gaps um, was transmitted to the president for, for assent. Um, it's disturbing, um, but we are where we are, uh, and we need to look at what the National Assembly and the presidency will do over the next couple of days. And as civil society, um, we have requested and asked that these issues be resolved um, within 30 days, and by the end of this month, um, these gaps and errors um, are not... Um, insurmountable. Um, there are cross-referencing gaps. There are typographical or grammatical errors. There are conflicting provisions. Um, but it speaks to the due diligence mechanism within the National Assembly. Uh, and I think that the leadership of the National Assembly needs to ensure that in addition to addressing the contentious issue um, in the, the bill in relation to the mode of um, nomination of candidates, the National Assembly needs to ensure that all these errors, um, typographical, or grammatical, or conflicting or cross-referencing gaps are addressed. Because if they don't, we would have legal complications in the implementation. And we can look at the merits of, of, of the position that, that civil society holds um, after submitting a detailed memorandum to the National Assembly um, last week. Okay, well, uh, you, you, you listed quite a few of these errors, in fact, all of them, about 11 of them. And as you said, some cross-referencing errors. And, I mean, these are those errors right there uh, on the screen for our viewers to just get a sense of those issues which the National Assembly uh, should be looking at. Interestingly, uh, the president did not reference these errors as the reason uh, for withholding his assent. But, Mr. Itodo, if the Electoral Act Amendment Bill was, well, assented, signed into law with those errors, what would have happened? Well, it would have occasioned um, ambiguities, controversies, and I would say complications in the implementation. And I give you a classic example. So section 50 of the bill, 50 sub 2, if you recall, was one of the most contentious and controversial provisions of the bill. That is the provision that deals with the procedure for voting as well as transmission of results. Now, for a provision of that nature that attracted a lot of public attention, you would expect that in drafting that particular bill, um, every T's and I's need to be dotted and crossed. But what you find is there was an error in the cross-referencing. And so subsection 2, that deals with the provision on um, transmission of results, references section 63 of the Act. Section 63 of the Act has nothing to do with um, section 50. There was no correlation because 50 deals with the procedure for voting and transmission of results. The appropriate section of the law that should have been referenced was section 60 that deals and articulates the procedure for the collation and the transmission of results. So there's a nexus between section 60 and section 50 and not section 63 that was referenced in that particular provision. So you would have had complications. The second was in paragraph 16 sub 3 of the bill it references or it provides 10 days that a petitioner can file his petition as well as a response by the respondent in 10 days. 
Now, section, uh, paragraph 16 sub 3 conflicts with paragraph 40 sub 8 of the same bill because paragraph 40 sub 8 articulates the timelines for election petitions and they make expanse provisions, be it for governorship uh, as well as national assembly. So there's a conflict, you know, in, in that particular provision. And, and if this were assented into, into, into law, we would have had complications because the courts will now be confronted with, um, you know, the challenge of which is the actual timelines for petitioners to submit their petition and for respondents to file, um, to file um, um, a, a reply. The other, perhaps, I would say also um, a provision that would have led to huge confusion was on section 137 and 138 of the bill. Now, section 138 of the bill mm. um, provides an marginal annotation is to the effect that it provides for accelerated hearing of election petitions. Now, if you look at the provision of both section 137 and 138, it is a replica um, and it's a duplicate. Uh, but even though both sections have different um, marginal notes, they mm. all contain similar provisions. And that's very problematic. Same thing also happened in paragraph 4 that right. deals with the documents that should accompany an election petition. There were repetitions in paragraph 5, in paragraph 8, paragraph 6, and 7. Now, you know, all of this would lead to complications, and that's why the National Assembly needs to address this before it transmits the bill back to the president. So you know, I'm taking a look no at all these. To decline assent to the bill, because he did that in 2018. Exactly, and I think it's quite commendable that you notice these errors because those were some of the reasons the president gave uh, for declining assent in August 2018. Mr. Toto, uh, I'd like to thank you so much uh, for joining us on the program to point these errors, and I imagine uh, the lawmakers are watching and the constituents are watching as well. Mr. Samson Toto is executive director of Yaga Africa. Thank you again for your time. Thank you.